Sounds great. So let me pop over to my NDI screen capture. Let's make sure that this comes through. Awesome. So now we have our bird dog cloud three login page. So we have my username and password already filled in. So ready to go and let's jump in. New interface. So um, let's, uh, let's look at it from the left over. So on the left, we have all of our endpoints that are currently logged in and online inside of our bird dog company account. Uh, if I come over to these top three dots over here, I can show some offline um, endpoints. However, they're offline, so we usually like to hide those. Um, so we get those out of the picture, right? Um, a couple endpoints over here. We have a BDJF, which is my laptop that currently has an active connection. We have a couple of HQ endpoints over in Australia. Uh, I have my office here as well, which I'll be using to bring in some sources today. Um, DX, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing I can't wait to tell you guys about. It's essentially a, an NDI pseudo turn server that exists up in the cloud and AWS. And it lets you uh, not have to worry about uh, port forwarding for those SRT connections. It's really incredible. Um, a couple of endpoints over in Norway from Jan, our cloud developer. And um, over here, we got another uh, bird dog sales engineer, Yuba Gold, uh, Ian Foster as well. So um, why don't we bring in a, a, a feed from Ian? Um, so if we wanted to send a connection from um, his location to, over to me, we'd be creating an outgoing connection, right? Because we want to send from Ian to bird dog Jake. Um, here are all the connection types. So. Like Cloud2, we still have RTMP streaming. Um, so if we jump into there, we'd be able to insert our URL key, um, our RTMP key, and uh, the encoder setting that we want to encode that over so that we can get it over to Vimeo, so that we can get it to YouTube or wherever your custom RTMP server is. So just as a, a quick... Uh, overview, Bird Dog Cloud is our NDI gateway to the world. So whether that be SRT, whether that be RTMP, whether that be cloud and cloud connect with the, with the new apps, we have tons of ways of bringing in or sending out any of your NDI sources. Um, and I say any NDI source because we want to be able to send those Adobe outputs. We want to be able to send the media composer outputs. We want to be able to send any of our bird dog converters or cameras, right? To be able to send and receive anywhere in the world. So if we pop back out, we'll go back to our outgoing connection. Uh, this middle one is what you guys who've been using bird dog cloud two are used to. So these are our endpoint to endpoint connections um, over SRT, right? So if we jump into here, we'll go to our cloud connect and on our left side, we have all of our sources that are currently at Ian's house, right? So at Yuba Gold, we have tree cam, we have a rear cam. Um, looks like he was running remote uh, connection. So that is also there and one of our other bird dogs. Um, so the one camera that I wanna bring over today is that PF120, right? So we'll go over here and we'll add that connection in. Um, Next setting over here on this pop-up page is we have our Cloud Connect SRT configuration. So we want to send that to my office, right? So we're going to go over here and select my bird dog Jake office. Um, let's see. Um, our connection type. So just like before, we can either send a single connection over that port 5556. We could add multiple cameras to send multiple cameras over the same SRT connection link. Um, or we can also create a multi-view. Um, so we can grab any number of our sources, um, have it create an auto grid or even a two by eight, which I really like to be using for pre uh, preview and program streams. And then the eight additional sources that you would have. Um, and then this is where you would even do bird dog presenter mode. You also have the ability to change the frame rate, um, create a custom resolution, 
which is something that we're really, really happy to add. So if you needed to flip that uh, to be a 1080 by 1920 instead of 1920 by 1080, that was one of the things I was messing with last week. I'll go back over here to have that single connection. We can choose to rename this. So if I wanted to call this Ian TreeCam, I can have that come in. And on my end, uh, Bird Dog Jake Office, that would be the display name of the NDI source. In our encoder profiles, which I'll show you guys later once we get into the deep dive, we can create different custom uh, FFmpeg flags for that encoding. So right now, this is a, a 10 megabit per second uh, H.264 encode. Uh, if I wanted to use uh, NVENC uh, for that as well, I could flip over there. Or if I had an uh, Intel GPU, I could use QuickSync as well. So we'll dive into, uh, into those encoder profiles soon. Additionally, we have the ability to change what the video decoder or the receiver is going to do. So I have the option of saying for my production computer to either use my uh, software, uh, this the CPU, or if I want to use my GPU. Um, I'm going to leave it as auto because it likes to pop over to the GPU and might as well. Um, now, this is really important. This last one over here, NDI failover source, right? So if you see on the right-hand side, we have all of my sources on my local computer. So I have a few bird dog central generator sources running. I have my premiere for my laptop. Um, here's my screen capture, which be, is being used to send this over to StreamYard uh, and a couple cameras. So what this failover source would do is I can bring over my P100 um, to this failover source. So let's say the connection from uh, Ian drops out, or let's say you know the ISP goes down and the internet's out. What this will do is this will keep the NDI source live on my end, on the receive end, but kick over to one of my local sources. So that way in your TriCaster or in your vMix or wherever uh, that's receiving that NDI source, you'll be able to have a, a live feed kick over right to um, one of your locals. So that way you don't have any um, unnecessary cuts or crashes or anything like that. Lastly, we also have the ability to record the proxy streams on either the source endpoint, so before it gets transmitted through the internet, as well as after. So if I wanted to do um, that that transport encode on my side or their side, we can have that happen as well. Um, so that's it for the Cloud Connect SRT configuration page. So now let's pop on over to the SRT page. So if you're familiar with SRT, this is where we have our connection types of rendezvous mode, caller listener, and listener and caller. Um, SRT requires at least a single port open uh, for those streams to have that handshake. Um, something about Bird Dog Cloud is that there's no uh, video or audio settings being sent through these types of connections. This is just a handshake between um, site to site. So that way we can send these uh, streams over. Um, we also have the ability to add uh, encryption up to 256 bit. So we know that those streams are highly securely uh, transmitting through uh, the public internet because we don't want anyone to jump into those streams. And then lastly, we have our latency, which by uh, default, usually the recommended is about two and a half to three times uh, the round trip uh, millisecond distance between the sites. So when I last checked, Ian and I were about 30 to 50 milliseconds apart. So I'm going to keep that at my default 20. Um, lastly, let's click next. So I didn't select that video source, so it'll give me that option, uh, that notification at the bottom to say, hey, you got to select a source before we can set that over. So now on my outgoing connection, we can see from Yuba Gold, we are going to Bird Dog Jake office and we had 
uh, that link icon appear, as well as a thumbnail for uh, that connection. So if I go over to my view details on the side, I can see my SRT statistics. So the bit rate that that's being encoded at, uh, how many packets are being sent, as well as what my lost or dropped packets are. And uh, it looks like this is an awesome, healthy stream. So let's pop on over to Studio Monitor. I should right click now and inside my bird dog, Jake, we should see Ian Tree Cam, which is what we labeled it inside uh, Studio Monitor or inside uh, Bird Dog Cloud. And now we have Ian's camera uh, directly right into uh, into my production computer. So, okay, so we should we should talk through a couple of these things real quick, just while let's do it. Now that you've got a connection established, so first of all. This is like an overly simplified new like web UI for this entire service. Is the first thing that's like out of the gates for me is like doesn't it look it's, great? It's way cleaner left to right. The matrix is like it's helpful, but it's this is way more like it makes sense that you're working across this way. And then you know the way that we're doing top to bottom with the SRT connections seems to be like way more simpler. So that's that's it's such a huge benefit i think and even for for customers that are making connections like i don't know if this is the way you find it jake you do a lot mm -hmm. more discussions about integrations with customers than i do but um we find that guys are setting this up once or they're setting it up you know at the beginning of production but then they're not planning on like touching it and manipulating it again right. so having it in a in a in a way that makes logical sense for the customer to click through and then and see things that are happening um just it, it makes the exactly. product way more accessible for a lot more people because it's you know move left to right also the um the connection here that is like the, the preview is that on by default or do you still have to set that up manually so, so yeah, the, the thumbnail it, here for that it's, it's actually really exciting so now that we're using um uh or we're hosting a, a bird dog turn service uh through and by google cloud um those uh or at least in Bird Dog Cloud 2, those required a turn server to get set up. Right. So now that we have that baked into the whole platform, that's what's going to happen on every connection as soon as um, that link is established. That's so awesome. It's really um, great because then you can really see if that stream is live. And look, I saw a car drive by. Yeah. So it's like we it's we, we know it's live. It's is it's that live. on is that on the transmit side or is it on the receive side or is it it's up in the, the turn server? It's up in the turn server. Oh, so it, it it is what is being received up there. Yep. That's the actual feed. Right. Because we have to send it up into the yep. um the admin panel for you guys right. to see that. Um so that's where that comes into play. Okay. You, I believe you have the ability to turn that off. Um sure. So just in case you don't want to use bandwidth through that. Um, well, but, it's a little piece of confidence where you don't have to open Studio Monitor every time to verify exactly. that the stream's coming through. Instead, you can just see it right there on the thumbnail. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's stinking awesome. It's too cool.